Europe is a continent that keeps going to war with itself, time and time again into catastrophic bloodshed. But since the last major war, Europeans have mostly put aside their differences and opened up to peace and cooperation between nations. Today, the European Union, at the time this video, has 27 member states, 450 million people within its borders, and the largest single market on Earth. But Europe isn't as united as it seems on the surface level. With nationalism and tensions rising all over, what does the future hold for the EU? And can it survive? In 2016, the British people voted to leave the EU for good and totally won't come back asking for membership again. France, Germany and Britain were considered the big boys in the EU, holding it together and tying up the weaker economies. And on top of all that, Brexit may create a crisis at the Irish border, with neither side wanting a closed border, but the UK not wanting Northern Ireland to be fully open. This is especially concerning considering the complex and violent history of Ireland. Brexit though really proves how fragile the EU is, with all the talk of tying up the economies of the European Union countries together. When one of the countries leaves, it really damages the economy of the whole Union. And with Britain leaving Europe, this could create a domino effect and end the EU for good. Along with Brexit, there have also been several other nationalist movements in the EU calling for an end to the EU. Europe is united, but it seems ever more divided as nationalism seems to become more popular. Yugoslavia, for example, survived for decades by promoting brotherhood with its diverse population. Instead of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes, the people living in Yugoslavia were Yugoslav, Yugoslav and Yugoslav. Unity through union, unlike Austria-Hungary. The EU has to find a way to keep this union together or far-right leadership will come into power and stay in power. Now as for the regions wanting independence from their respective countries, there isn't really a clear answer for that, but the EU needs to be directly involved to avoid a full-blown war or losing a member from the club or the domino effects spiralling way out of control because the only country to benefit from that scenario is Russia. The fall of the Soviet Union still has major political influence over Eastern Europe today. Poland, after being partitioned, partitioned, screwed over and puppeted, was finally free from Russian, I mean Soviet, control. Through the 2000s, Poland was the most promising young democracy in Europe, and its leader Donald Tusk was a strong, pro-EU, handsome man, and even became president of the European Council. After Donald left Poland for the EU though, his party kind of flopped and let Law and Justice, also known as PIS, an anti-Semitic, authoritarian, right-wing party take office. Through gaining the support of Poland's conservative generation, PIS claimed that after decades of control by the Soviet Union, Poland was now under control of the European Union. Law and Justice then went about taking over the courts, since they already controlled the presidency and the seats. Their power over Poland's constitution was anything within the laws of physics. The EU didn't like this, as Poland was severely breaching the rule of law, and had no choice but to revoke Article 7, the just-in-case button, which would allow the EU to strip Poland's voting rights. There's just one problem with the just-in-case button, though, which is that it requires a unanimous vote to come into effect and Hungary is defending Poland, blocking any chance of the EU stepping in. As it stands, Poland is breaching EU law whilst getting away with taking the benefits from being in the EU, and there's nothing that the EU can do about it. But there is hope. The most recent election in Poland saw PIS won, but only by a small margin, and with Poland's deeply polarised nature, some say that PIS's downfall is inevitable. Well. All of us Poland Ball fans can only hope that Poland's democracy and ideology can survive. Still rebuilding itself since the fall of the Soviet Union, Russia is once again a player on the global stage and considered a major power, at least in Europe. Putin's militaristic strategy abroad has destabilised the Caucasus and Eastern Europe and has deepened the political divide in Western democracies. Putin's biggest success was annexing the Crimean Peninsula to secure Russia's warm water access in the Black Sea. 
His alarming actions have prompted sanctions from the West, but that won't stop Putin from making Russia great again. Putin's strategy is to divide Europe, supporting every single extremist, separatist, and independence group, and consequently weaken his opponent. Tips on how to stop Putin from taking over Europe. Tip 1. Don't disband NATO. NATO's you attack one then you attack us all strategy is good for making sure that no one on earth will have a military to compare to yours. Or if you don't want to rely on America, because I mean, who does, then tip two. Make an army for the European Union. The combined force of the militaries of the EU put it at third in the world. Combining armies would also increase cultural understanding, cooperation, and save operating costs between the countries. So, it seems like a no-brainer. Ukraine will never be part of the EU, nor will it be part of Russia. In its current form, the Russian East and the Western West seem like different countries, and in this form, Ukraine won't survive. Unless this time round they actually don't break the ceasefire. The issue with the Euro is something that has been discussed a whole lot, but is nowhere near a solution. In 1999, the Euro came into effect, which, I mean, uh, hasn't solved all our problems. The purpose of the EU was to tie the economies of Europe even further together, to make EU members more dependent on each other. But the Euro is tying nations with vastly different economies in all sorts of uncomfortable positions. With different laws and wages and salaries and vastly different economies anyway. The Greek crisis wasn't all the EU's fault, but it's now a problem that the EU has to deal with, overall reducing the value of the Euro and Europe's economy in general. The question of the existence of the euro, the different laws, the trade, the crisis, the unity, or just making all the countries follow the same laws, is all a big mess that is nowhere near a solution. So don't ask me about it. The EU has many problems in the future. I've only briefly gone over a few interesting ones. From insurgency that would tear the EU apart from the inside, and outside threats like the resurgence of Russia. This isn't too in-depth, and I do intend on making videos that discuss some of these points in more detail. Oh yeah, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't mention. Okay, bye!